So it's a 2022 Yamaha VX Cruiser with a three-cylinder TR1 engine that I got in July of 2022 after waiting three months for it to come in to Brewer Cycles in Henderson, North Carolina because Yamaha cut their production by 30% in 2022. The unit itself weighs 679 pounds. The trailer is close to 300. The calculations I made, and yes, I looked at the registration, total weight between the Wave Runner, trailer, full tank of gas uh, is 1,100 pounds. Nothing serious to tow, but uh, you can do this with a car. I don't recommend it. It's too much for the transmission, drive axles, and the engine. You will probably burn out something in your car kind of quickly. The body is made out of Nano XL. Not fiberglass, if you're wondering how sturdy it is. Watch my video where a drunk driver crashed into it at around 25, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> Some of the gouges you'll see underneath the hull are from drifting into shore. Some of it's from rubbing on the bunks. You'll see that right there. The rest of it is just trying to beach it. That's from the rocks, so I don't recommend drifting. Getting underneath this unit, just going to give you a visual. Nothing's dry rotted. I do take the silicone spray and spray every screw, everything in the engine bay, so that if it ever gets into salt water, there's not going to be any corrosion. Not a lot of haul damage because I learned my lesson quick and I don't generally make the same mistake twice. Here's the engine bay. Obviously you can see it's always ventilated by keeping the seat off as I explained. More silicone spray on all of those coil packs, screws, anything that's metal. Here, obviously, you're seeing that there's no mold built up on anything on the inside. Not the interior Nano XL hull, not that plastic, nothing. Keep the seat off, keep it ventilated. I do not recommend trying to ventilate it by taking your, what are they called, the bungs, the plugs in the back, your bilge drain, because people always forget to screw them back in and bye-bye boat. Now let's get into some of its diagnostics, hours, fuel economy, etc. So again, I recommend changing the oil within 10 hours because as I've explained before, these RPMs are screaming at 8,000 when you're at wide open throttle. Breaks down the oil viscosity much quicker than a car and is a lot harder on your engine. I do use the Yamalube and that filter and there's the anti-corrosive silicone lubricant I use to spray in the jet, every screw in the engine to prevent further corrosion. This is just some top video of the foot wells. After I wash it, I take a vacuum and I vacuum any remaining sand out of it. So just like my first video, we're gonna be sitting on this thing uh, again after a two year review. Don't fast forward around the video yet. Um, there's got some other important things to talk about, things I've learned. I'm sure if you're a subscriber here, thanks, I do appreciate it. If you wanna learn all about mechanics of a wave runner, how to maintenance them, spark plugs, oil, do's and don'ts, here are just some last tidbits for you. Just looking at some of the scratches, whatever underneath the hull, uh, anchor yourself wherever you're at. Don't drift, because as I was fishing, I drifted one time, nothing bad, and I'm pretty much right on shore small waves just rocking this thing a little bit and that's where those gouges came from there was you know some small rocks underneath it don't drift anchor yourself don't beach it as 
much as everyone loves to because obviously it's sand and it's like rubbing it off with sandpaper. I don't recommend that. Here's why. Um, with one of the other videos I made, if you ever go to sell the thing, people are going to look at the hull. And if it's beat to all holy heck, they're probably not going to buy it. Would you buy a used vehicle if the body was beat? That's just what's on the surface. So God only knows what someone else will think is uh, how else this unit, wave runner, or vehicle has been abused and not maintained. Um, I do use the Yamalu. I do change the oil once a season. Uh, with the 21 hours that are on it right now, I changed the oil three times. Watch those videos, and I just did the spark plugs. All Yamaha recommended. I did gap the plugs. Because the if you've seen my video on changing the spark plugs, the gapping was all over the map. So spark plug gapping is important because that's how you get optimal fuel mileage and ignition. Same thing with cars. I do spark plugs on my trucks as well. So those are just some things I'd recommend on some tips of, of do's and don'ts. There was uh, one subscriber, a lady asked where I got the pole holder in the back. I know I answered her, but I'll put it on the video now in case you watch it again. GCJetSkiFishing.com. I think it came from Australia. Uh, yeah, it was like 140 some odd dollars. It came to like over 200 dollars with shipping. But as you can see, it works beautifully. The other pole is on my driveway baking in the sun. Here's another tip for you. You go fishing, you get a brand new pole, and all of a sudden you're casting, you're reeling, and it's just knotting up, bunching up, and it's, it's just an absolute mess. Anytime you get a new fishing pole or put new string on it, let it bake in the sun or some really warm water because then it just kind of conforms to that shape and you'll have much better luck. There's just another tip for you. So there hasn't been any mechanical failures with this thing. It's only been to Jordan Lake and Lake Norman in North Carolina. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get it to Cure Beach, North Carolina to take it out on the Atlantic. But other than that, um, after two years, yeah, I like it. Um, but then again, if you saw my first video, I bought this, ordered it, when Yamaha cut their production by 30% in 2022. And that's all explained in the first video. So yeah, they got me $1,800 just in freight. Now, wave runners, jet skis, PWCs, whatever you want to call them, are all over the place. So I do like it. Again, if you want to learn about the maintenance, you want to learn about flushing it. I, I got it all in these videos. So I flush this thing even after it's been on the lake every single time. Everything you need to know, everything I'm talking about is all in my videos. No, I'm not trying to be famous, but yeah, us YouTubers like people to love view videos and things like that. But then again, if this is the first video you're watching, all those videos talk about all of it and they show you exactly how to do it, even loading and unloading. So, last thing I want to tell everybody is, you really, really need a four-wheel drive vehicle going up and down these ramps. I, I see it all the time, pickup trucks, SUVs, vans that are even front-wheel drive, which is not to say it's better than rear wheel drive. Remember, these boats going up and down this ramp, they're dripping water. So on these concrete slabs, that's making them slippery as it is, and they're on an angle. So you're gonna lose traction right there. And then sometimes there's sand right at the bottom. And when your back wheels are in that sand, you might as well be on a sheet of ice. I see it happen all the time. I don't know how people don't fly into the lake, but you get a four-wheel drive vehicle if you're gonna get any kind of a boat, separate by. 